for the most updated version of the Glyphs RPG Blueprint. Tokens, accessories and resources, please visit www.glyphsrpg.com. Also visit 2ddice.com for our internationally popular D20 RPG coins and our other masterful coin works. Welcome to chapter 14. Um, we're going to talk about ether. So, what exactly is ether? Okay, so ether um, basically is the invisible force uh, that permeates all things and binds reality together. So, for sentient beings, so monsters, player characters, and so forth, um, think of it as a source of subtle energy um, that's specifically harnessed uh, to unleash techniques and powers, right? So, sort of this invisible etheric field. Um, that, that powers your special abilities. That's essentially what we're doing here, okay? So this is a very short and quick chapter, but also very important, so I'm gonna skim through real quick. So page 260, um, let's talk about the rules of Ether. So Ether plays a very vital um, role in a character's performance, okay? So like we mentioned briefly, it's a conduit for harnessing, for harnessing special powers, techniques, or um, also, as a sort of an invisible shield against hostile powers. And we're going to talk about that section here shortly. So um, the amount of ether um, that some a player character or a monster can use um, is measured in ether points, so EP. So sort of like magic points, right? That regulates how many times you can use a special ability um, throughout a day, right? So once your EP is gone, you cannot use any more uh, powers or techniques until enough has recovered, okay? That's our system we're gonna be looking at here. So um, now one thing I wanna point out here, uh, the number of default EP a being has um, is generally proportionate to um, its size and rate type bonus. So tapping into ether, right, the ether, um, requires um, a high level of intent during a brief moment in time. So special ability, right, just to summarize that. So. Here's all the specifics of how we tap into it and all that. That's great. Now, one thing I want to point out here quickly, um, EP uh, automatically depletes every time a power technique or etheric shield is used, okay? So abilities, um, they have a designated um, ether point or EP consumption value um, that should be uh, proportionate to the level of effectiveness, right? So more powerful stuff, obviously, is going to use more EP and so forth, right? Now, like I mentioned, um, if, if, um, if somebody's fully expended um, their EP for that day, then they can't use any special powers, techniques, or the etheric shield until enough is recovered. So that kind of summarizes the role of ether. Now, ether recovery, let's talk about that. Very important, okay? Now, it's up to the architect how they regulate and track that, but I think it's very important to be mindful of. So. A character's um, expended EP inc um, incrementally recovers throughout the day, right? So there is none of this. Once you're out of EP, you're gone for the day type of thing. It's always recovering throughout the day, right? I want people to use their abilities, um, and then that's that's one reason why I decided to do it that way, okay? You can have a house rule that says once you're out, you're out, but I like this whole idea of recovering, right? It rewards people. so. Um, one key factor that you want to keep in mind um, that affects EP recovery is this character's state of comfort, okay? So, because um, ether flows most effectively when the mind and body are at ease, right? So, some clothing items may grant additional uh, EP recovery based on their comfort value. So, why is that important? Let's talk about that here. So, by default, here are the EP recovery rates that I came up with throughout the day. So let's talk about that. So a being, okay, so a player character for all intents and purposes, um, their physical and emotional and mental state, they're very overwhelmed, right? So they're exhausted, they're overburdened, they're in serious pain, they're severe pain, right? Um, zero EP um, per hour recovery. So they don't get anything for that hour, right? They're overburdened, okay? Um, let's say the character's state is uncomfortable, okay? So they're tense, they're afraid, they're, they're in some mild pain, they're, they're uncomfortable, right? They're engaged in the heat of combat, okay? Um, that's a long combat session, so maybe a war or whatever, right? That would generate one EP for that one hour, okay? Now, 
let's say that that character is active, right? So engaged in day-to-day -day experiences, right? That's by default two EP per hour recovers, okay? Then we have here, or right there, let's say that character is very comfortable, right? So they're relaxed or satisfied throughout the day, three EP uh, recovers per hour, okay? Now, finally, let's say that we have somebody who's very meditative. So very, you know, nice, you know, deeply meditating or, or going through a full sleep cycle. So somebody who's got a lot of rest or good meditation, right? Um, for that um, period, they recover five EP per hour. So take a look at this section here. Very important to keep in mind and refer to for EP recovery. I think it's pretty balanced. That's why I came up with those numbers. Because again, I want people to use their abilities and be able to gradually recover without abusing them too much um, or punishing people too much either for that matter. So I think this is a pretty fair calculation um, for you to refer to, okay? Now, real quick, so by default, it always recovers, right? Unless something prohibits you from otherwise, but there's another way to recover ether points, okay? Without using a potion. So let's talk about EP recovery via consumption. So in addition to the default hourly recovery rate, EP is also recovered when a character assumes, you know, consumes a meal or a beverage. So eating and drinking um, regenerate EP. You know, I see all these games out there that the character eats a food item and or drinks, you know, wine or whatever, and somehow they recover hit points. I, to me, I think that's retarded. That doesn't make any sense. How can a food item somehow recover, you know, physical injury? That doesn't make any sense unless it's magical, right? So that's one reason when I was thinking of this I, I, had to, I had to rethink that a little bit right unless the food is magical or whatever um, food and drinks should not only nourish the character but also contribute to the game experience somehow and I thought that was the best way uh, EP recovery so um, different food items and drinks will have um, a role in that okay so let's talk about here page 261 okay so that's going to give you more specific details so EP recovery if we're going to look at time estimates um, so here um, it says architects should measure uh, the recovery of player characters um, EP based on the default recovery rates I recommend six hour interval blocks okay it's I don't think it's very effective to count every single hour it's very time consuming as it is us architects have enough to track um, anybody who's running a game knows that. So I think a six hour block is pretty um, nice and well rounded to work with. That's why I have it in here. Okay, so these periods can simply be um, approximated for simplicity, right? You wanna save time. So the EP recovery rate is based on a, a comfort rate that best summarizes the period. So real quick, you could just glance at this and say, overall for this last six hour period, you guys were, you know, uncomfortable, right? Or active, okay? Um, you would have recovered 12 EP at that point. So active, I just want to point something out. I recommend using that as the default recovery rate because we're adventurers, we're explorers, right? We're, we're player characters in this crazy world, right? So you're, in most cases, you're probably going to be active. So that is my recommendation as a default um, recovery rate, okay? So 2 EP per hour, or in this case, 12 EP for a six hour period. That's what I recommend. So each of these has different recovery rates, right? So here, now I wanna notice something here. So if it's a six hour period, and let's say your character's meditative, if he's meditating, right? Okay, I would put that as 30 EP recovered. Now here, I put eight hours for sleeping. Now that's assuming that the average sleep cycle is eight hours. I know it's different for every person and every creature, sometimes six or whatever, but that's why that is there is eight hours so let's assume you just say a full sleep cycle it can be whatever it is but a full sleep cycle um would give the character 40 ep so just want to note that okay now let's talk about ep recovery for consumables i know i just talked about it there on the previous page but let's talk specifics here how specific um how specifically does that work okay so characters recover expended EP with consumables, so food, drink, right? Okay, now the amount of meal or drinking session is based on the character's taste rank, so, and um, the item's flavor rank. So, 
on the first page of a character booklet, see your sense ranks. You'll see something for vision, for hearing, for smell, and for taste, right? That's what you want to refer to. So anywhere from zero to three dots, okay? Most player characters will probably have two dots for taste, right? So that's what you want to refer to. So that's your sense rank. So zero through three, right? And the item flavor rank, okay? So and can have zero through three as well. So depends how they, the, the architect wants to rank it and that simply gives you the value here of how much EP recovers if you're one account food. So I've got a player character that says, I'm gonna have dinner at this fancy restaurant, right? My adventure's over um, or I'm about to go into battle or whatever and I wanna recover some EP in addition to nourish myself. So how much have I recovered, okay? So let's say I have a level two taste rank so it's balanced, okay, so most people will have level two, that's pretty standard. And let's say the meal uh, flavor rank, okay, from stimuli and the environments chapter is what I'm referring to, that's where I get these from, okay. So let's say the, the meal has a level two uh, flavor rank, so pretty tasty, right? So here, that gives me five EP recovery, so that meal will give me five EP. So that's what you wanna to refer to, again, this is one of those few times I say refer to the charts. This is one of those times. So 261 will give you the values there. Okay. Now, here's another final um, approach that I like to take for EP recovery. Okay. So let's say you want to go through all this, right? And there's no time. You're on a quick session. You only got a few hours to play, whatever, right? Um, you could look at EP recovery as an average daily approach. Okay. So the architect may a lot... Um, recover DP by simply estimating the, the day um, instead of uh, calculating um, com comfort and consumable rates, right? So here is 78. That's a magic number that I came up with, okay? Now, why did I come up with that? So 78 EP you recover for, per day, right? So that, um, that's, com that's derived and estimated um, from an active comfort level and balanced taste buds, so level two senses for taste, right? And robust uh, flavor ranks. So all these things are averaged in to come up with that number. So in one day, you could just, the architect could just say, you've recovered 78 EP for the whole day. Or if you wanna look at it a half day, simply divide it by that two and, and so forth. You get, you get what I'm saying. So that's another qu very quick uh, way to look at it, okay? So now, Let's move on uh, to the final page of the ether chapter. And um, we're just about done here. Take a look at page 262. So I've got a couple items of importance here. Um, first is a um, default character um, EP chart. Okay, and then we are gonna talk about the etheric shield very briefly. So let's look at this top part here. So default character EP. So how much does my new character start with? That's what this says. I've already done the legwork for you and uh, come up with these numbers based on um, each race type um, and, their, and their figures that are listed in the race type section. It's there for you to refer to if you want to do it manually, but again, I've already done it here uh, to save you time. So very important chart to refer to there. So these here, when you're creating a new character, you'll reference um, when somebody asks you, hey, how many EP do I have? Okay, that's what you want to look at, right? So. You'll notice here it's divided into sections, right? So first of all, it's race type driven. So humans, elves, dwarves, ferals, so forth, right? These are just the default race types that I came up with. Obviously you come up with your own, I highly encourage you to, but these um, these race types here are pretty well rounded. Okay, so each one's there listed. And then here we're taking into account the different types of campaign you're creating, okay? So neophyte, veteran, and adept. So. A neo neophyte campaign, like I said, brand new character fledgling, right? Veteran and um, more experienced players, you know, intermediate level. And adept is your epic level, you know, very advanced campaign. So these are the characters and the builds that I look at. So here, um, for human, if I'm creating a brand new human character, no matter what archetype they are, it doesn't matter. They, in a neophyte campaign, so a very fledgling level one type campaign, they'll have 24 EP by default, right? Plus whatever bonuses and stuff they get. Keep that in mind too, don't forget that, because I do sometimes. Okay, so let's say I'm creating a veteran or an inter intermediate level 
feral, okay? They would get 48 EP. So veteran level campaign, so intermediate. I recommend that for camp for um conventions and stuff. Feral 48. So these figures here, they're already there for you by default. Uh, feel free to expand as you please. So one last item in this chapter, very simple but very important. I want to talk about so um, the etheric shield. Okay, so every being has a natural defense mechanism against uh, powers, so magical spells, right? Or Marvel abilities that inflict damage, so superpowers, things like that, okay? I call that mechanism the, the uh, etheric shield. So, specifically, um, the etheric shield um, is only activated when a power would otherwise inflict damage um, or a status ailment uh, onto that particular character, okay? So, whereas damage would be interpreted um, through the token's digits, Okay, or through the element glyphs like we've seen in the combat system as multiple levels of damage from 0 to 3, right? We've already seen the different intensities and stuff, right? Okay, so the damage delivered um, by the power when the etheric shield is active is instead absorbed by the etheric shield um, as proportionate numbers of ether points, right? So if the power inflicts a status ailment rather than physical damage, then the etheric shield is depleted by the number of EP that the attacker's power uses. So I just want to point that out. That's very important to know. So in short, if the shield is successful, then it simply absorbs the level of damage that the character would have taken and the defender's EP is subtracted, right? It's basically using the shield costs you EP to use is what it basically means, right? Or if there's a status element done that doesn't do actual damage, then you know, but it's poison or whatever, right? Or blindness or, I mean, it's up to you how you interpret it. But whatever status ailment um, doesn't do physical damage, you simply um, deduct um, the character's EP proportionate to the EP power that was used. So if, uh, let's say the blind spell or whatever uses 10 EP to cast, right? Well, because the shield absorbed that blind spell, then t 10 EP is subtracted from the uh, defending character's um, total EP because the shield worked. So think of the etheric shield sort of as um as another modifier, I guess you could say. In fact, we're going to talk about that here. So look down here. So using the etheric shield. So here to use it, um, the power modifier score, the power modifier score, is referenced when the character attempts to use it. Um, the etheric shield against an incoming power. So um, the attacker and the defender each spin the token and interpret the digits from 0 to 9 like we normally do in a combat encounter, right? Adding in their power, power modifier score. Now, the etheric shield will only protect the defender if the result is higher than the attacker's. So, should the shield uh, be activated, then the respective number of EP is depleted, just like we talked about. So, if you are if you got somebody going against, you know a character with a very high uh, power modifier, like a 9 or a 10 or something ridiculous, um, be very careful because that's a very powerful spellcaster type character. So you're probably not going to win that match, right? So very important metric, the uh, power modifier um, to um, to know. It's not just there as a dump stat. It's there for a reason. Everything here is there for a reason, right? So something important to know. So let's say, um, you know, like you see in the movies, and games, lots of them, where the guy gets electrified by this lightning blast from this guy's fingertips, right? Let's say you've seen that a million times, or, or this guy gets lit on fire with some fire stream, right? And you got you see him knocked down or whatever, but he's still going. He hasn't, for whatever reason, you don't see the spell actually burn this guy alive, right? Or blow up from electrocution, right? You don't actually see that until a couple minutes, right? Let's just say, well... My logic to that is maybe there's some etheric component to that that protects him for just a minute. Maybe he, he's in pain, but he's still alive, right? That's sort of my interpretation on that, and that's why I can sort of kind of justify having that in here to begin with. So, again, that's my reasoning behind it. You do what you will, but um, in short, using the etheric shield, somebody says, hey, you just hit me with that power, um, right? The power succeeds, but guess what? They want to defend against it. You can't really defend against the power. It's very hard to, right? It doesn't make more sense, but the, um, the etheric shield is sort of your last line of defense against the power or a technique, right? Or some techniques, right? So they would first have to use their power modifier, overcome the challenge. If it succeeds, they can absorb it with EP. If not, they get hit by the power. That's essentially all this is trying to say. So 
that pretty much um, wraps up our tutorial for the ether chapter thank you again for joining me and um, now we're going to talk about um, chapter 15 um, structure here shortly thank you